30 days ago, I started coding. Really, this video highlights the past month that I have spent programming and it has been an absolute blast. I go over everything that I've created, everything I've done. Hopefully, maybe you find this either inspirational or educational in some sense, because I have absolutely loved my journey thus far, and I am so hyped and excited to continue to see what I am able to create in the future. And for the people that are new here, I am a former pro player, now turned streamer and caster. And for the people that are already here, the reason I've been streaming very little and barely uploading is because for the last month, all I've been doing is coding. I am completely addicted. So it started with a day I just was really like any other. Didn't really feel like streaming and I thought to myself, I really want to create something. So I found a tutorial, none other by Brackies, where you learned how to use Godot and how to make your little sample game in Godot. Followed the tutorial and uh, didn't really know what to expect. I had this idea in the back of my mind. I really wanted to create a game that's kind of like Swarm, Vampire Survivors, but multiplayer with more of an emphasis on the unique character kits rather than just getting items that make you that strong and that was the dream game that I had in the back of my mind that I really wanted to create but upon this journey I've realized that I just love the process of coding and creation and I've even started liking art which I never thought I did because I don't think I had a singular artistic bone in my body but doing pixel art has been surprisingly fun so I want to take you guys now on the journey I've done so far as a, a developer, although I haven't really developed anything, so it feels weird to call myself that, but what I've done in the first month of coding and uh, yeah, essentially just show you guys what I've been up to. So the first thing I did was I followed some of the tutorials, I made Bracky's little game, and then I looked at a lot of different things. And I was trying to figure out what is the best way for me to get a solid foundation so that I can actually get good enough at making video games. Because I'd heard a lot of people talk about tutorial hell, you don't want to fall into that, and you don't want to just run the tutorials, and you kind of need some foundation to build around. So. I discovered CS50 and I am so glad I did. So CS50X, it is Harvard's computer science entry course and it's taught by none other than David J. Milan and he is kind of my go, honestly. He's just so good at teaching, so concise, makes it really simple, makes it enjoyable. My, my daily routine would be listen to two to three hours of lecture into doing the problem sets for the rest of the day and that would be my day. That would be every single day. So I did that course. It's supposed to be three months. I did it in roughly two weeks. Uh, and then for the final project, I used another uh, week or so on that. And I really speed ran it. I wouldn't recommend speed running it like I did. I just, I have a very obsessive personality. I get really into something and I really, 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 really get into it. And it's kind of all I want to do. And also I did use a bit of AI, but hold up, hold up before you shoot me in game, obviously. I used it in a good way, okay? Because I'm not stupid. The goal is to learn, right? The goal is to learn. So I would put in the problem I was having, and then I would tell ChatGPT, this is from CS50. Do not give me the solution. I just want help with syntax, and I want hints, okay? And then CS50, uh, ChatGPT, kind of became my best friend, honestly. Now, whenever I have an issue, some debugging or something, it's kind of replaced my Google, which is interesting because before this, I never used AI. I kind of hated AI, but using it as a Google is really nice. It's actually really nice. And it, it, it just it works as a good teacher, especially when you make it be a good teacher. If you just make it do things for you, as far as I'm aware, I'm still a noob, of course, but I think that's pretty bad because then you're not getting the skills that you need. But if you use it as a tool to help you learn so that you ultimately know what to do, I think it sped up my learning a lot. I think it sped up my learning a lot. Because instead of me sitting on my chair for one hour, just bonking my head up against the wall, it would be for 30 minutes. And then I'd ask ChatGPT uh, for hints, and then another 15 minutes of doing that. And eventually I figured out what I needed to do. And the highlights from CS50 for me was just, I think the way the whole course is taught, building everything up from the ground up, starting with C. I really liked C, honestly. It's weird now because I'm coding in Godot, which is GDScript, but I really liked C. It just had some had some pizzazz to it. I don't know fully how to explain it, but I liked that you needed to tell it everything and that it was very like, 
kind of like the curly braces. I don't know why, I, I just like them. It felt clear in my head that a curly brace meant that everything was there, while indentation, it works as well, but it's a little bit more confusing for me. Maybe I'm weird, maybe I'm weird, yeah. So then, the final project of uh, my CS50 course was a little Godot game, a little Vampire Survivors, where you play a character, you have a bow, the character, maybe his name is Lilo, didn't really figure out a name for him, just, he was an asset that I took, so I didn't feel that connected to him, he's, he's alright, but he's a cutie, he's a cutie, but I didn't make him, and my girlfriend didn't make him either, so we didn't have that personal connection, me and him, and he fights slimes, and this all started out from a tutorial, just how to make a Godot uh, Vampire Survivors clone in Godot. A very good tutorial by the GD Quest folks. I'd highly recommend following that. The problem I had was with this project was I followed this and then I followed some Vampire Survivors tutorials from Breno. And uh, I don't want to throw any shade, but I think those tutorials from Breno were really bad. Just he made everything seem so complicated and I just don't think it needs to be that complicated. And everything was in the player file, like all the weapons. All the weapon properties are in the player. Player. That makes no sense. Like, why does the player need to know everything about every weapon? Just didn't make sense. And it felt like when I encountered that and I tried to implement that into my code and try to not redo what I was doing, but instead of add onto it, everything just became so messy. So I ended up trying to cut that project kind of short, just made it five minutes. You play, then you encounter a big uh, queen slime that my girlfriend made and you fight that, you kill it and you get a little victory screen and the game is over. I also made a little soundtrack for the game, which is like a, a four second melody that plays on repeat. Worst decision of my whole life. It's so loud, it's so annoying, just constantly plays. So if you play my game, turn that volume straight, straight down, straight down. Has a nice sound when you pick up XP. I like that sound. Also has a little sound when you shoot an arrow. It's like a whoosh. It's quite nice. Um, but yeah, the, the volume, the, the music. But if you want to try that game, it's on Ishio, uh, link down in the description. I mean, it's, I don't know if you can call it a game, to be honest. If it's five minutes, uh, is it a game? I'm not sure. But that was the first thing I made, and I, to be honest, wasn't too happy about it. But what I can share is that I'm way happier with what I'm working on now. Now we are working on Torin, the mage skeleton, which my beautiful girlfriend drew up in pixel art. First, I tried my hand on it, didn't look the best. Didn't look the best. I got pretty mugged by my girlfriend. She made a lot better one. Um, but the whole idea is that you play as this skeleton mage and he's a bit of a cutie, you know? I want him to be a main character and that he's like nice to look at rather than being scary. And it's kind of this, you know, the swapping of the roles you usually play as like a, the cool main character, but instead you're playing as a skeleton. And then ideally what I would like to try to implement that makes it different from a normal Sampire Survivors is that you can summon undead to fight for you. But what I want to try to essentially do is just make a complete Vampire Survivors clone because I think that would be really good for me just experience wise and that's where I want to take this project. And I've been following a different set of tutorials for this game and I swear, 16-bit dev, that's the guy who's made the tutorials. The tutorials don't have any audio, they just have text, so it's not the easiest to learn from. But the way he codes this shit is the smartest shit I've ever seen my whole life. It's just... They're so, like, everything is so easy to add on. Right now, I could go and add five different weapons, probably in, like, five minutes. Well, if I were to try to do that in my previous project, that shit would probably take me five hours. You know, it's just insane. If you use resources, if you use uh, a bunch of compartmentalized and different classes that all link together, like, we have this weapon class that has an item class, and then you have the projectile class, and if I wanted to make a non-projectile weapon, I would just make it inherit from the weapon class but have its own properties it would be easy essentially is what i'm saying and that's super cool and super nice and one of my big goals for this whole game development journey of mine is i really want to get good at coding well because i think that would just make everything much simpler i know that some people say that it doesn't matter how you made it it's just about making it work and at the end of the day that's true but it's also i think it just it will put you in a hole so many times and i know from my competitive experience in league that if there is a smarter way of doing things, you should do it the smarter way, because it always it's always bad to look for the fast payoff now rather than the, the slow gratification later that will give you a higher payoff. So I'm, I'm all about the higher payoff later and trying to build my way up to being a really good programmer. My goal right now is that in six months, I'll be good enough of a programmer to make whatever my big juicy head comes up with, because I have a lot of ideas and I've loved video games ever since I was a kid and 
And learning the tools to be able to make video games has just been so, so addictive, so fascinating. And it just makes me want to do more things. Oh, I'm trying to do 3D. I want to see how that would work. You know, what if I tried to do procedural generation? That's something I was thinking about, like a 3D procedural generation climbing game. Not peak though, it would be like a roguelike where it's all about jumping rather than climbing. And it's kind of like more of a platformer, but there's also obstacles and there'll be enemies. Like just so many ideas in this tinker head of mine. And I just can't wait to see what the future holds. And there's so many things I've learned. I'll link some of the resources down below that I've used. I think I'm very happy with my progress over a month. I would be down to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? And also, like, what do you think I can improve upon? I'm still learning pixel art, trying to get better at that. And uh, <clears throat> my girlfriend is also learning pixel art from me, which is wonderful to help me with the artwork. And also, I would uh, love to, you know, work with other people or talk to other people that are interested. If you are an artist or if you are a developer and you want to uh, help or talk in some type of way, I mean, I'm down, you know, I'm down. It's more of a passion thing, though. I'm not going to pay you, okay? This is passion, passion, passion. This is still a hobby, okay? And the reason I can have this as a hobby is because I'm a caster or an analyst on the LEC, so I typically only work in the weekends, which means I have a lot of free time. And that free time before was spent streaming. But now I can do whatever I want. Kind of ranting on here. Anyways, I'm super happy with all the progress I made in one month, and I'm going to be making a second YouTube channel covering the developer updates and essentially logging everything I've done code-wise, because, you know, I've been a YouTuber for a while, so why not make a YouTube channel dedicated to everything development-related? And if you're interested in that, link will be down below. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you are uh, aspired, as inspired as I am about this whole new journey and uh, i'll still be streaming league regularly it's just you know i have something else that really lights my fire right now and i really want to pursue it and see where it takes me if it makes me money that's great if it doesn't that kind of sucks honestly it would be nice if it turned into something more profitable but that's not the goal okay that's not the goal the goal is just have fun and to learn and to become someone that can create a great game thank you for watching see you guys in the next one Bye bye